this video, I'm going to showcase um, new capabilities in the Profiler Builder module uh, in a sub-module called Profiler Builder Extras. So you can see there's a dev release now. Uh, you're going to have to get it from there. just came out June 18th. Um, but it's kind of crazier stuff. That's why I've siloed it in its own project. Before I get into that, though, there's a quick plug for Drupal Camp PA, I'm trying to get the word out about it. It's going on in Pittsburgh, August 2nd and 3rd. We're still looking for additional speakers and sponsors, so if you have interest, please check us out at DrupalCampPA.org. But back to this. So I've got the latest edition of Profiler Builder installed on um, a copy of Elms Learning Network. So I'm going to see what this does. So after you get the new sub-module installed, go to Development, and then Profiler Builder, you'll see there's an Extras tab now. And under Extras, there's, we'll submit this as if it's blank. So there's two additional things. And as you see, I even say here, here's some more crazy things you can do to extend it. Um, so the first one is called Features Builder. Now, Features Builder is not a project that I have anything to do with, but it looks very interesting, and it's trying to automate the production of features based on kind of like build sets, if you will, um, using sort of a methodology to go about packaging things automatically. So I haven't been able to get it exactly working, um, but that's intended to go in here. So if you turn that on, it runs a function, but I'm not really sure what the function is doing at the moment. The one that you can see is query logging. And so if I submit, You'll see there's an, another option that shows up. So query logging. What this is going to do is say that you are allowed to log queries on the site. This is a technique similar to Devil, if you're familiar with putting on the Devil module and then logging the queries so you can review them at the bottom of the page. Uh, what the difference is, though, is we're going to so we're going to do some query logging right now. We're going to actually activate it. So you have to say that it's an, enabled, and then you kind of turn it on and say, hey, I, right now I want to log what's happening. So we're going to leave that page, and we'll wait for this one to refresh for a second. You get this wonderfully cryptic message at the bottom here that says queries are being actively monitored, uh, and then you can click profiler, you know, a quick link to profiler building settings to disable it. So what it's doing is it's looking for things that have actively changed, and what does that mean? So let's create a page. Right, because a node is a series of database queries. And we can come up with a billion different ways of doing features-based version control, and you'll get a half billion answers is the best way to do it. So we're just going to put in some dummy stuff here. Sure. Save. And then the page will come up, and it'll just say, hey, it's logging stuff. But to get a sense of what's actually going on, right? So we're, we're monitoring this. Let's go to the Profiler Building Settings page. And then there, if you have Devil turned on, you can click Review Queries that have been logged. And what this will do is it reads off a temporary directory on the back end and is actually actively storing the queries and the arguments that were used um, against this site. So you'll see that page when I hit save on the node form it's kind of a cool way to be able to step through and see that this touches node node revision updates node it touches field right we get into menu links because I changed those settings there's a couple updates to menu links we get into updating the variables and then we can see well menu expanded was updated in the variables table so you can get into all these things it's pretty pretty neat actually to watch it and get into node access, URL aliases, all that fun stuff. So why is this useful? Well, if you know what Profiler Builder does, it's for taking things and turning them into uh, a distribution. So the idea is, and let's, let's kind of record another one here real quick. So if we've got this page that's had modifications to it, uh, let's say it's not a page though, let's say it's a setting somewhere. So logging and errors, we're going to say we no longer, you know, let's just change this like this. All right. So because we're still logging what's happening on the site, let's review the queries that have been logged. You see, we have two transactions now. The second one, oh, sorry, that's the first one, puts them in opposite order. Uh, we've got insert into variables. We've got this one. Right, so those are the two settings in the database that were changed when that page was submitted. 
So what's happening on the back end, if we pop open terminal, is you see we've got this profiler builder directory in our query log, and it's just storing a JSON package. So as soon as you pop that open, you see the same thing that you see as you know prettified output here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we're done actively logging queries now. So let's uncheck that. And then we're going to go to the normal profiler builder form, which I could have just clicked there. I'm kind of silly. And so you'll see we've got all these other options that we normally have. And we're going to go through and disable these real quick. Because right, this will do a lookup against Drupal.org, um, testing to see if those patches exist. And then we're just going to hit download profile and see what happens. We get a little download link here. Scroll that up so that it did it. So I've got online underscore stuff dot tar. And let's open that up and see what's in there. So to see what the query logging capability did, it utilizes some new hooks in the profiler builder project. You'll see we've got this nice install profile. It's clean. It used the settings that were uh, set by default, auto detects features to make sure that they're reverted at the end of the operation, all that good stuff. And then, uh oh, we've got the database queries that we've been capturing the whole time automatically authored into here as an update hook. And this is a little crazy. So I don't know if anyone can find a exact usage for this. I'm sure this adds another workflow that some people are already trying to monitor what they're doing as far as database queries and replicating them in update hooks uh, for distribution development and normal site development. Um, but there is a full-blown API for different calls that you can ignore and things like that. But I kind of view this as a different way of going about packaging changes uh, and making sure that they're applied in a standard fashion. So without getting into all the, you know, some people don't like features. I love features. I use it for a lot of stuff. Um, but there's some things that, especially if you're trying to keep track of incremental change on a project that has uh, rather unique database rights, um, WYSIWYG template would be an example. WYSIWYG template writes to its own database table. This would be a way, if you made changes, without having to constantly worry about doing features packaging, um, of automatically authoring an update hook into your in, your distribution um, profile, and then you can ship it out the door. And then if we wanted to do the next one, it'd be something like that, right? So we could do seven zero zero one two three four. So uh, this is still highly developmental, kind of crazy, which is why I marked it that way, <laughs> of tracking database queries and then executing them against new targets. But um, I thought it was something interesting to show.